So in all of our other engine factory videos, you've seen the machines that are actually doing the machine work on the engines. And if you've ever wondered where they came from, this is where they came from. We're going to show you how they get put together. I'm Ryan. Welcome to Rottler. I'm the lead applications engineer here. Rottler's been around for 100 years, so let's see how it's all going down and where it started. This is like one of those manufacturing inception videos <laughs> know, where it's right? like, where do the machines come from that make these things? <laughs> Answering all the important questions. I mean, we're starting in the lobby, and this is, uh, for Rottler, this is Genesis. I mean, this is where it all started. Rottler started in 1923, making manual boring bars. We're gonna go mock up the original boring bar from the 1920s <laughs> on a block of the shop here. I wanna know what your theory is on yeah. how the heck this ends up in Seattle. Think about 1923 Seattle. Yeah, I mean, There's I no interstate. There's barely railroads there's dirt out road, here. There's dirt roads this is, I think, this is, going to Portland and yeah, all. This is pre-Model A. <laughs> you know, this is before the Model A was out. This is this is working on Model T's. Was there anybody even rebuilding engines at this time? And I think of Seattle like it's some remote island like New Zealand where we need to be resourceful way out here because you're isolated from Detroit. Uh -huh. You don't have access to pistons and parts and things, so you have to fix them. Back in the time where this first became available, people did not remove the engine blocks from the car. The engine block still in the car, bolted it to the top of the engine, lined it up, put this manual uh, T-handle on here, and this is the way an engine block was bored in the very beginning. Manually moving this down. Very slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> Did they call it a boring bar because this was a boring job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've always joked about that. Uh, Rottler Manufacturing used to be called Rottler Boring Bar Company. <laughs> and uh, eventually we got into many other machines, so we changed it to Rottler Manufacturing. If you go back to 1925 or whatever this is, if your block was bad, your car was bad. It mm -hmm. wasn't just removing, there was no option. So if you couldn't fix this, your car became garbage. Like we buy a new laptop, mm -hmm. people would have to buy a new car. Yeah. So this is a big deal. This one repair means, okay, now I can save the whole car. This is our main office, um, kind of the hall of heritage here. We have a lot of cool diagrams, uh, hand drawings done by uh, the entire Rottler family, really. I mean, going back, Andy Rottler is the current owner and he's a third generation owner, which is something very unique in kind of all business industries. It always was the Rottler Boring Company, making portable boring bars, up through dual-headed monster boring bars, progressed into surfacers, CNC machines, and, and going from kind of small block general engines to production remanufacture and all the way up to large industrial diesel and gas uh, with the F80 series. And that came out in the mid-80s. So Clarence Rottler started Rottler back in 1923. Don Rottler, Andy's father, took it over in the mid-50s, I believe. And uh, then currently today, we have Andy Rottler running as our president. This is our kind of wall. We, any members that stay here, we'll make them a little plaque and uh, like to keep it a very family feeling company. We've got just under 100 employees today. Let's start here at the first apartment. This is the home department. I know he's been featured in your video. Back here is where our H80 series gets built. We have the H85A, H85AX, and AXY machines. Automated hole to hole. Around the 1970s is when Rottler originally started getting into the honing business. Um, we started with the old swing arm machines and uh, directly competing with Sun and CK10s and progressed through that era uh, up to this most modern era. So, which model is this going to be when it's done? This looks like it's going to be an AX, so you know by the motor. So the X means it moves in X axis, so we, we do a rack and pinion design which allows these to be CNC controlled and go hole to hole uh, for each engine. So is it basically like you got a couple guys putting on one machine at a time? Yeah, so they'll build them about like this. Four, we can do four to five at a time. Uh, usually one tech will build the whole thing through and through. Um, we'll swap out and help out for some things. It is probably the most US made machine that I know of. Most of the components are coming directly out of Washington. So the whole tank and everything is just is in Washington state. We machine all all the components ourselves here for the finish work. Other than the motors themselves, is pretty much everything on this thing is, is US made and manufactured and assembled. And that's something that I know Andy is very, very proud of. What amazes me on those is how sensitive they are. Like where there's like 
some type of measurement system in here built in to find like the high spots and low spots in the yeah. bore. So that's what made the Rottler unique is, is with our control system and being, you know, we're running a full computer on this machine. And so we have our current graph here and that's exactly what we do is when that machine is honing, it's sensing that pressure, that current load on the motor. And it can tell exactly like you said, is it tapering? Is it a high spot? Is it a low spot? And, and we can get bores round and straight within two tenths all day long. What is the air filter for? I've seen that on other machines. You're in shops, you got a lot of cast iron dust in the engine industry and we don't want that getting inside. Um, we also, usually you'll see fans on a lot of our electrical boxes and they're not actually to bring air out of the electrical system. We, we run them the opposite direction to push air in so it becomes positive pressure. What so is he doing over in this corner? Uh, so all of our electronics are assembled in this corner. So we bring the cabinets in, everything's flat packed, and then he's assembling the entire control system. So we build the entire control system here, and then go and put all of those boxes you've seen on every machine is going to get installed with whatever configuration, whatever circuit boards that they need for the power requirements. And then this is our engineering side, so this is where engineering's been for at least the last 10 years. Testing out a bicycle suspension. Doesn't know we're looking at them. Yeah, when I print things out here, I'll look at. I like to. Oh, he sees. Yeah, it's James. <laughs> that's like, my that's my mountain bike buddy. He's like, damn, they just filmed me bouncing on my seat. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dang it. Yeah, so we run a full CNC shop now. Um, again, just like anything, it's evolved to keep up over the years. Rottler was running manual machines in here all the way up through the '90s, but Andy Rottler has always been very, very into CNC technology. He was kind of the one to really push this company into our own CNC controls, and so scaling up and just getting everything we can to be able to do production. So you got machines making machines right here. Machines making machines, that's how you do it. And we run our own, like we have our own EM69 ATC, so that's our four axis block work machine. Uh, you can come on in. We run it, this was actually the first one we built, and you know, you gotta test things, so we set it up in here, and they've just been making parts on it for gosh, probably the last five years. So this machine is making parts for itself? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so been a good way to you know test the machine and get in a in a, a daily use environment where it can run 10 hours a day so is this like the machine that does cylinder head porting uh it's the kind of the i guess the little brother of it, it it's the block work machine but built on the same frame as the hp uh -huh. um the hp is the five axis the only difference is you have a five axis articulating head uh -huh. and that's in the back but they're all built all these machines are built assembled right back in uh, the left corner here this is one of our last manual machines um for the Rottler F80 series, mid-80s, we went into the big diesel market, and we've always had a traveling column, our large format machines, with uh, highly precision ground spindles. And so we've kept this manual grinder in T here, always does a fantastic job of hitting every number, and we track each spindle, which is really cool. So we have an inner and outer spindle assembly, and we'll track each dimension on every machine that it gets assembled to whatever that got ground at. And we record that information because we make our own tooling, our own right angle drives, this is a piece here, if I, if I rattle it, see there's a little, you hear that little? Yeah. Right? You, wanna, you wanna make sure that you hear that all the time because what this does is when this thing's boring, this, this makes it so the cutter head doesn't chatter, which was, a, a, again, a great, simple little design that made the machines better. And when a customer wants to order a new right angle drive because it clamps on that spindle, we have to have that number, that, that diameter of their machine to, uh, to match it, so. Is he the master of using this machine? He is the master of this machine. How long has he worked here? I'll ask him. Hey, T, how long have you been with Rottler? 19 years. 19 years? Because yeah. you're the master of the spindles. That's what hey. we're, talking, we're talking you up. That's all I got here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thanks, T. You can get right angle drives from the general machine tool industry, but none of them will fit into an engine block to allow you to line bore them. So again, very unique product. It's taken years to develop. Our, our ways that we used to do it was to have a, a long bar that went through that whole block and you compensating for bar say down the block. And it takes a long time and a good operator to set it up right. Uh -huh. With this, it repeats within one ten thousandths of an inch every time. It goes right back to that same center line. And, yeah. and so, you know, blocks like this that have been under, you know, high operation, you, you, you know, you may have to do an align board the, because the, one of the bores got hot, 
you might also have to do an align board because of even torsional fatigue on the block because it's been loaded up and, and just has some misalignment. I don't know that there's anybody else in the world that has there's this. Nobody's doing that. Okay, I got an important thing here. This is Andy's daughter. They have another generation <laughs> oh, kicking around geez. here. I thought I would introduce Karin. Who's been with us, what, had, over a year and a half? About a year. About a year? Yeah, there. Hi, Hi Karin. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wonderful having you down here. Thank you. <laughs> Do you think that she likes working for you more than you like working for your dad? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Boy, that's a story I've told a couple times anyway. And that um, when I first came down to work here, I never saw my father. I, I think for probably the first 10 years, I don't think I ever went to lunch with him. I was out working in the machine shop. I'd started doing field work and sales work. Then my father and I went from never seeing each other to traveling around the U.S. in an airplane. He was a pilot, a hotel room, and then into the rental car traveling to customers side by side and we did that we had a lot of fun doing that for probably about uh, 10 years I don't really see him as my boss you know mm -hmm. he's, he's a boss of everyone but my boss is just the manager you know so uh -huh. I'm glad that we still have that like father-daughter relationship and not just a so you don't have to report directly to him yeah Kind of no. keeps exactly. That, yeah. Keeps him dad. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right. I gotta go back to work. Okay. Get to work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the hones. So these are the hone tanks. They come in as a weldment uh, east of the mountains here, and th this is how they are, fully finished. And then we will finish these on. Again, we use one of our own machines. The Rottler F106 was our biggest machine. Uh, now we do the 107 and 109s. So we've moved this machine over here because it's, again, a, a very large machine and it works really well for finishing out our, our hone tanks and we also do our, uh, our boring bar castings on this as well. I just think that's so funny that this machine was made in here yep. and now it's being used to make other of itself and little brothers and that's it. cousins. That's it's it. like a, it's and like it's kind of unique because everyone thinks Rottler, you know, engines, and that's what we do. That's our niche. I mean, 100% through and through, engines is us. Um, but it's a good, probably no one ever sees that, you know, you've got a, a Rottler doing other machine work, general machine work that, uh, that isn't as common. Did John choose the color scheme for all the Rottler machines? He did, and we had the old green machines, that was, that was his thing. Andy moved it to the white and red stripe one not too long ago. Yeah. Was the next changing of the garb whenever everything changed from green to white? Yeah, well, that's where What's I got the story in. of the, the paint color change. That's right, that's where I got uh, involved. I was here during that time, were, and were I you? was absolutely <laughs> against it. I couldn't believe you're going away from Demenso Green. That's the Rottler color, and he wanted white. And I'm thinking, no, don't do that. You were right, it's yeah. much better. I can't imagine green. <laughs> Man, alive. We changed our image, I guess, a bit that way, and tried to brighten things up for the shops. How long after you became in charge did it take for the green to go away? Oh man, that's a mean question. <laughs> I can answer that, he might answer it wrong. It was, it was within three years that this conversation started. You're okay? probably I know right. That I'm right. You're probably right. I have, yeah. I have yeah. a story about your father that I'm not gonna share. Oh, about. oh yeah, okay, <laughs> oh God. No. Interestingly enough, I do see Rottler Green, the classic old Rottler Green, I told you. That, that Andy purged the place of Rottler Green. <laughs> There's parallels right there. Oh, really? Just say, voila. <laughs> so don't tell him about it or go paint <laughs> these too. You don't want to paint them. <laughs> so there's, there's still remnants in here of Rottler Green. This is kind of our staging area. We'll bring the slugs in. A lot of this is for locators, fixturing. Rottler's a solutions company. Um, and so we're trying to provide that entire solution. That's what makes Rottler unique. You, not only you're buying a machine, but you're buying the machine to do engine work with all the fixturing. Everything comes all in one. So somebody could call you and say, I need a machine to do this specific thing, and you will figure that's, out how to make it do that. That's what we, that's what we try to do. Um, we try to make sure that we're working with them directly, and you know, we have solutions for a lot of the engines and a lot of the common operations, and if you've got something that uh, is unique or that we're not doing, we'll work directly with you to design something, make sure that we get you uh, you know, the best fixturing, the best process so that you can, you can meet your demand. So back here is our flagship, uh, the 100 department. 
In the mid 80s, uh, Rottler started with the F80 series machine, which was, you know, going after the target of you had high horsepower diesel engine rebuilders supporting mining, oil, natural gas, and marine. This is our largest machine today, which is awesome to see running here. Um, they're just finishing up alignments. So the EM109 is, is, you saw the 106 in the machine shop. This is the evolution of that. This is the biggest one you have. Biggest one we have. So we can go out and take a look at a Cat 3600 block in the back parking lot at some point, and that would be the size of block that you're putting on this. So before we had this whole expansion, where this whole, this is all relatively new and we blew it out, they were building these in the back corner, and I still to this day, I have no idea how they assembled them and then got them all the way out to the shipping dock. When you build one of these or when it shows up, we actually put the work head on the table, and then we'll ship that all. And so this machine has to be assembled at the customer's facility, hmm. right? Because there's just no way to fit that in a shipping container or yeah. on a truck. So we'll, bed will go separate, the column, everything goes separate, and then um, we have some great service techs who come and do the installs and they will assemble and hopefully you have a crane big enough. You should be if you're doing engines that size, so. So if, yeah, for the ones this big, you have someone go out there and like assist with the everything, installation everything, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. What about the smaller ones? Do you have reps that go out and set those up too? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll do a factory install. Um, and, and even down the smaller ones, we'll have distributors, sales reps who will do the smaller machines. You know, like with these, you have to put anchors into the floor, so that you need a 36-inch concrete slab. You're not just going to get one of those. You're building your facility to accommodate oh, this, yeah. this thing. Yeah, and it's really <laughs> cool. It's really cool. Some people will, they'll actually sink it, and they'll do a pit, and then they'll put the concrete, and then you're your machine, that bed, will end up being level with your concrete. You can just walk right on it. Let's go see one of the blocks that would go on this yeah, thing. Yeah, let's just do to, it. Like, give the scale yeah. of <laughs> what it's really doing. So yeah, this is the Caterpillar 3600 block, so used for stationary power generation. And this would be the block that would be remanufactured on a, on an EM109. Um, stationary, you don't say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <you're, laughs> I don't know how you move this There's probably thing. a few marine <laughs> applications, but try and, trying to imagine how you put that in a boat. That's right. I feel like a like an action figure. Like I've been shrunk down. It, it, you know, it looks like a regular engine block. It's just it, it's just enormous. And you keep all these different types of blocks here for your like your own reference of making machines. And yeah, we'll work directly with you know Caterpillar and and Cummins and MTU and and we have partnerships that are willing to you know donate us cores or let us kind of keep them to to uh, test and, and do fitment stuff on the machines and, and prep the machine again. You know, before that 109 goes out, this block will go on there and it'll, it'll be tested on with this block to make sure that it can do it. What do you have in here that moves this? A large forklift. Pick it up with Bam Bam. What are these little blocks? Uh, that's a project I've been working on actually for a compressor remanufacturing company. So uh, our newest machine that we unveiled at EPE, the EM45, is getting a custom fixture to uh, do all of these and just rebore them. I think people really realize how many piston-driven engines are yeah. making our world move around. A lot it's of reciprocating stuff. Uh huh. Like, I mean, have you is there have you actually like done any research on that to figure out if what has more is it road-going automobiles or is it industrial? stationary like you know ships trains man I'd, power generation i would say it's probably cars because they just pump them out and they're cheaper but that's a great question I like mean, what's the ratio i feel yeah, like i feel like this kind knows? of stuff has to be there could be a lot of that though i mean how many you guys i mean probably, every compressor the amount of automated manufacturing that's the <laughs> that's the doors versus wheels conversation <laughs> <laughs> like, i don't know yeah so here's our em69 department so this is where we do three machines back here we do f69s that's targeted at the performance market. Um, EM69 ATC, which is an enclosed version of this, and that's kind of targeted at PERs. And then our EM69 HP, which is our five axis porting machine. Is PER a performance engine rebuilder? Cur yeah. Race cars? Yeah. Why is 69 every number? In we it's like a really common number. Yeah, you know, we started with the F65s and then it's worked its way up F68 and then F69. Um, so yeah, here's the, the HP, so that's your five axis articulating head porting machine. So full alignment, we digitize on machine. So these are the ones you see with a cylinder head and they're doing all this kind of crazy stuff. Correct, so you put a porting tool, lollipop porting cutter, we use the Renishaw probe, 
We have our own proprietary software. We digitize on machine, which is what made this whole product line unique to Rottler. So you can put an LS head in there and you can go around and the probe touches each point. You can digitize in an hour and then you can write a tool path in 10 minutes and you can just, every head you load after that will be exactly the same. So explain to me what you explained yesterday about the Rottler methodology versus a standard CNC machine. Right, so a standard CNC machine will use G-code, they use Mastercam, um, you're, 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 you have a CAM software, it gets posted into G-code, you upload G-code. Uh, Rottler, what we've always tried to do is say, we want to cater to that engine market and we want to be able to take engine builders and make them engine machinists. And, and trying to learn that skill set, it, it takes a lot of training to be a full CNC machinist and have all that understanding and it's very complex. So we made our own software to make it simple and like with porting, you know, if you're a guy that's used to hand porting and you have your own race winning ports, being able to just put that in there and let the machine take care of you and kind of just do point and shoot machining where the probe is just going to figure out what you've done by hand and then you just want to replicate that for every head you do. So you can um, literally, if you got Pappy's mega port, hand port job in it. here, you can put that head in here and this thing will scan it and duplicate that's it. it. That's it. Literally. That's the whole thing. That's insane. I didn't that's know how, you could do that. That's with how this. we port, yeah. That's our way. That's how we do it. So if somebody had this back in the nineties, they could have taken a Robert Yates head and just copied it. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That manual boring bar eventually became we did stationary bars like this. You had the old F two Bs, the green machines, and now we're still currently supplying uh, F nines and F tens. Uh, and that's where these are all built here. So they have a floating work head. This is Pretty unique, this is the old school Rottler design. Work head is on air float and we have centering fingers. So before the times of probes, like we use on the other machines, uh, these would just, the operator could quickly just center over that bore, press a button, four centering fingers came out, centered it while the work head was floating. That locks back down and you hit bore and it just goes right down. Super simple. So that's like on those old green machines and those pictures, those would do that? That's how they all work, And yeah. that's what made these. Yeah, and then they evolved up to this, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And the other, other competitors didn't work like that, I would imagine. No, there was nothing like it. Nothing like it on the market. Am I going to mess this up if I touch it? No, you can move it linear rails. They're preloaded too, so you kind of got to push down on them because they're meant to handle the weight. Low friction. That's part of a big part of what gives you the precision. So all of our machines, we switch to linear rails. There's um, zero top like, movement in this at all. It's no, solid none. as a rock. That's right. You know how many countries these machines are operating in right yeah, now? Global company. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's just like American manufacturing right there. Yeah. This is it. Pretty rare too, especially, I mean, to be here for a hundred years and, and to see this company's journey, you know, I've been here for five and to be in Washington, I'm born and raised here and to have this company still doing this and doing it well is like you said, American manufacturing and to just be doing it that long and still doing it when a lot of people have, have chose to go other ways. So it is special. And that's what we love to show here. It is special. This, this, yeah. is, this is important to people. Yeah, this it, is cool. This is awesome. People to know that this is still out here. It's still thriving, and it gives you hope. Is this where the mega machines used this, to get put this together? This is where they're in. So it's seat and guide department now. But yeah, we were doing the 80s, 100s. So you have the floor anchors in here with the steel plates, which again, you're like, how did you get those massive things around the corner? I guess they didn't have the tool room built here. but so We always like to do the then and now shots with the old picture versus what it looks like currently in the race shop. So we'll do it here, too. This picture, what year was this picture taken? 1985, 86 yeah. maybe, yeah. So this, we're standing on top of the first one right now, right? And then the second one's right behind it, like that, and then <laughs> close enough. There you go, same spot. <laughs> this place is kind of like the offensive lineman of the engine industry. Like everybody likes their race cars and stuff, but not much thought is really given to the stuff that enables those engines to go in your car and have fun or haul a trailer down the road or <laughs> work a mine or something like that it's like i i don't know it's kind of like the unsung hero backbone of of all of this stuff it's almost like this pool of creative energy there's so much mm -hmm. thinking going on upstairs in the engineer it's engineering it's assembly it's manufacturing it's all right here at this facility and it's dedicated to an industry and it has been for a hundred years. And it's just, it's amazing to come to a place where there's just so much creative energy being yeah. put into systems that work. Yeah, There's really nothing like it in the world. If you're into engines, any type of engine, 
it's right here. Yeah. Little guys all the way through the biggest thing yeah. you can take out of them. You know? And all the different places you work with, whether it's mining or stationary power generation or race cars, you were like communicating with all these different people who are saying, yes. we're having a problem with this. We want to figure out how to do that. Exactly. And some innovation or an idea that a mining guy says, we need to be able to do this to this application. You yeah. guys make it. And then the race car guys are like, wow, we didn't know that this would totally change our lives. Yeah, that's right. But it came from a completely different industry that otherwise without you guys would not have been linked together yeah. in this thought tank. Yeah, that, uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we've been to a lot of factories and a lot of manufacturing centers for doing YouTube videos and it was really interesting to see how these companies work. I can tell you after going to all these places, there's not very many of them that I could see myself actually working at. Like I think, okay, alternate reality if I'm not doing YouTube and I have a job working at one of these places. Which ones do I want to work at? Rottler is one of them. The Not just the culture of the people in the office either, I'm talking the whole facility the people who are putting stuff together the ones in the office everybody and there's a lot of really neat stuff in there that we didn't get to cover this video is more about the people aspect of the company and not so much the technical details if you want to know more about the technical side of honing you can watch the video we did with lake jr and greg anderson and we think it's important to document places like this because these companies really are the backbone of our industry of the things we enjoy there's without places like rottler our race cars make less power, they're less reliable, and they take longer to fix. <laughs> or, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, all the stuff you don't even notice, like the mining and the power generation and just stuff we take for granted, like having lights on. It's just far and wide. That's why we love doing this stuff, and we hope you enjoyed it too. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the thumbs up because that helps more people find this video.